following story is about a family who visited the location of where the Normandy landings took place, or as it is better known as the D-Day landings. Whilst visiting the sites, their daughter was observing more than just the bunkers and other remnants of the war. She could see things that her parents could not, and it was not until a year later that she shocked her parents by describing World War II German soldiers ready for battle, more than 60 years after the event. Ghosts of Normandy The following incident took place in 2007, when a couple and their daughter were visiting Normandy in the northern coast of France, and more specifically the site of the Normandy landings, which took place in June 1944, during World War II. The first stop was a Pegasus Bridge, and they then moved into the beaches and bunkers of Normandy, and then onto saint mer Iglese. The first German bunkers I actually came upon was Point du Hoc, which had not changed in over 60 years, when the bunkers were overrun by the US Army Rangers on D-Day. They visited many bunkers and escape tunnels, where most bunkers were totally dark, and the only light was when the father had taken the occasional flash with their camera, which temporarily lit up the dark chambers. In all, they not only viewed many bunkers, but many other ruins that had been destroyed in the ensuing battle. At the time of their visit, the daughter was seven years old, with no knowledge of World War II, let alone who the armies were that were fighting each other, what types of uniforms they wore, or types of weapons they used. At their home back in the United States, there were no war books with pictures, and she'd never been exposed to any war movies or ever seen her father playing war games on his PC, as they ensured she was not in the room when he played them. Therefore, their daughter had had no previous exposures to anything relating to World War II. About a year after their visit to Normandy, and the daughter was now eight years of age, she started to talk about strange things that she'd observed whilst they were touring the Normandy battlefields. She said she saw men looking at her and pointing guns at her and following her while they were in the bunkers and around the Normandy area. She claimed that they were crouching down, hiding behind corners, holding guns and looking as if they were very angry. Her father became so intrigued by her story that he decided to delve a little further into what she claimed she had witnessed. Her father claims he was not into the paranormal. In fact, he was a complete sceptic and would normally debunk any such story if anyone were to tell him about such things. However, he was so fascinated with his daughter's story that he decided to keep an open mind and ask her a series of questions. He asked her what they looked like and she said, they were mad and their clothes were grey in colour and their helmets were even darker. He asked whether there were a lot of them and she said yes and they were hiding behind trees, in the bunkers, in all the corners and behind the walls. They were crouched down and some were kneeling. He then asked her, did they have nice uniforms and were they loose? She said the uniforms were nice with lots of buttons in the front and things on their shoulders. He asked whether they wore any medals, either on the head or chest, and she said, yes, something like a circle with a star in it on the chest. Were you scared, he asked her. Yes, but I knew they weren't trying to hurt me, so I didn't think anything of it. But there were a lot of them, everywhere I looked. They were moving around and crawling, but bent over. When we walked out of the bunker, I could see one in the grass and behind a tree. Then, when I was in the car, I could see them looking at me from behind a fence in a field. Sometimes a lot of them, sometimes only one or two. Her father then said, why didn't you say something to me? And she replied, well, I couldn't, I didn't know what they were. I knew they weren't real, so you wouldn't believe me anyway. He asked, were there different types? And she replied, yes, some had different colors, like a dark color and then a greenish color. He asked her to draw some of the things she'd seen. What she drew scared the hell out of her father. He asked her about the gun the soldier was carrying, where she proceeded to draw what resembled an MP40, of which the German soldiers actually used in World War II. 
She tried drawing the helmet, but she couldn't get it right. Her father then drew the front view of a standard German helmet. She said that was it. It was pointy on the sides when you looked straight at it. He then asked her about their boots, but she was unable to describe them as they were not standing up. This was true, as most German combat poses were crouching down. He asked her to describe what other soldiers were wearing, and she drew a German tunic. She said it was tight and looked very nice. It was not baggy and had buttons. When she drew a picture, she quickly drew the medals on the right breast and also quickly described the colours and shapes that would have been the unmistakable camouflage pattern. There was one particular soldier she was describing that looked different from the others, and he was in the bushes. He had a very dark helmet, a really big gun, bigger than the others, and his clothes were funny colours like something green and dark colour, with different shapes, where she was again describing the camouflage design. They later went to the library to further research what she described and found a World War II book with many pictorial images. He showed her pictures of British, American and German soldiers and she quickly pointed out the German soldiers saying, that's the helmet, that's the jacket and that's the gun. He then showed her a colour drawing of an MP40, along with other World War II weapons, on the same page. She immediately picked them out on that page. They returned home and went on the internet, where they found a picture of a 12-inch doll of a Fallschirmjäger. The Fallschirmjäger were the paratrooper branch of the German Luftwaffe during World War II. They were the first German paratroopers to be committed in large-scale airborne operations and were used at Normandy. She had described the man with his dark helmet and chin strap that was easy to see and wrapped around under the chin very tight. When she drew the picture of it, it looked different to the other helmets. She said it was not pointy on the sides, it was flat, small and tight to his head. When her father showed her an actual picture of the soldier, she said, that's what he looked like. That's the helmet, Daddy, and his jacket looks the same. She had also correctly described the medal, which was the unit designation badge that all German soldiers wore. She pointed out a circle with oak leaves when he showed her pictures of the unit badges. He was baffled as to how his daughter could describe in detail the German soldier's uniform from World War II and could only have gotten the description from actual sightings because she knew nothing about World War II, let alone the Normandy landings. There is no doubt that when they visited Normandy in 2007, she had seen ghosts or apparitions of German soldiers waiting for the Allied troops to land on the 6th of June 1944. The father says that what his daughter saw that day, she claimed, was 100% true.